the Fiat G55 Centauro was a single-engine Italian fighter. It was one of three Serie 5 Italian fighters, the other two being the Maki C205 Veltro and the Reggia Niari 2005 Sagittario. All three have been dubbed the best Italian fighter of the war, and opinions on the subject are divided. The fact that all three of these fighters used the Fiat RA 1050 Tifone engine, a license-built Italian version of the German Daimler-Benz DB605, contributed significantly to their high quality. The DB605 was used on the BF 109G and K variants, as well as other aircraft. The Fiat G55 prototype took to the skies for the first time on April 30, 1942, and was tested against the C205 and the RE2005. The C205 performed well at medium to low altitudes, while the RE2005 was the best dogfighter of the three, and the fastest at high altitudes, but it was also the most complex which was an appealing due to the longer production time. Even though it was slower than the RE2005, the G55 had the best performance at high altitude. The G55 and the C205 were chosen for mass production. In February 1943, a German test commission was sent to Italy to compare the performance of the Italian Serie 5 fighters to that of the BF 109 G4 and the Focke Wulf FW 190A5. The G55 and the RE 2005 were rated excellent, while the C205 was rated average. However, the RE 2005 was too complicated to mass produce, so the Germans concentrated on the G55. Oberst Peterson, the Commission's leader, went so far as to say that the G55 was the best fighter in the Axis. Based on this, Germany decided to produce the Italian fighter. The Germans were also interested in the Italian fighter because it could be fitted with the newer, more powerful DB603 engine, which was too large for the BF109. This resulted in the development of the Fiat G56, of which only two prototypes were produced despite promising results. Kurt Tank, the famous German engineer known for creating the focke Wolf FW190, was another prominent figure who was amazed by the Italian aircraft. Despite recognizing the Italian fighter's strengths, tanks saw a flaw in the G55, which required up to 15,000 man-hours to produce. Although he believed that number could be reduced to 9,000, the reality was that the BF-109 required approximately 5,000 man-hours to produce. The Luftwaffe dropped the G55 project due to this as well as the evolution of the war. Instead, the DB603 engine was used on Kurt Tank's own project, the TA-152. By early 1943, Allied strategic bombers had become a familiar sight over Italy. The C202, the main Italian fighter up to that point, had very poor performance above 8,000 meters of altitude, and Italy desperately needed a high-altitude interceptor. The G55 entered service in March 1943 and saw its first action in June, when it assisted in the downing of a B-26 Marauder that had bombed Capoterra airport. The invasion of Sicily quickly followed, and Italy signed armistice in September, splitting the country in half. At the time, only 35 G55s had been delivered to the Regia Aeronautica, the Italian Air Force, and only one of those 35 was flown south to surrender to the Allies, with the rest being absorbed by the Luftwaffe or joining the newly formed ANR, the National Republican Air Force, which fought alongside Germany until the end. The ANR had two fighter groups that flew the G55, and the Italian fighter performed admirably even against tough opponents like the P-51, P-47 and Spitfire. American bombers destroyed the Fiat factory in Turin in April 1944, and G55 production slowed significantly until the end of the war. The G55 started being replaced by BF-109s in late 1944, which was highly unpopular among Italian pilots. During the final year of the war, the few remaining G55s were mostly grounded due to a lack of fuel. The Fiat G55 Serie 1 had three 20mm cannons and two 12.7mm machine guns. This armament was more than capable of shooting down heavy bombers, and when combined with the large amount of ammo that it could carry, it made it a very dangerous foe. The G55's large wing area of 21.11 square meters contributed to its good high-altitude performance. 
the G55 had a service ceiling of 12,750 meters, which was higher than most taxis aircraft and comparable to the best American fighters. As previously stated, the G55's production process was far from ideal, and this, combined with the worsening conditions for the Axis powers, resulted in only 274 being built during the war. The lack of ground attack capabilities was cited as one of the aircraft's flaws by the German Commission that studied it. As war drew to a close, that possibility became increasingly important. The same commission discovered that there was no standardization of instrument layout in Italian Serie 5 fighters, and that the overall layout was confusing. Visibility was also marginally lower than that of the German fighters. Several variants of the G55 were produced during the war. We'll go over the three most important ones. The G55S was an unproduced torpedo bomber variant. The G56 was the German prototype with the DB603 engine. The G57 was a planned radial engine variant. G55 Soto CD0. This was the pre-production version. It was powered by a Fiat RA 1050 Tifone engine that produced 1455 horsepower. It was armed with the engine mounted 20mm Mauser MG15120 cannon and four 12.7mm Breda Safat machine guns two in the engine calling and two in the wings. G55 Serie 1. The Serie 1 replaced the wing-mounted machine guns for two more 20mm cannons. The engine-mounted cannon had 250 rounds, while the wing-mounted ones had 200 each, for a very good total of 650 cannon rounds. In addition, it could also take two 160 kg bombs. G55 Serie 2. The last two machine guns were replaced with cannons on the Serie 2 resulting in a total of 5 20mm cannons, making this version a dedicated bomber interceptor. The Fiat G55 Serie 1 will now be compared to the German Messerschmitt Bf 109 G4, which was used in the German Commission's comparison. For this, we'll assume the basic G4 version with no substantial modifications. Wing loading is the total mass of an aircraft divided by the area of its wings. This has a direct impact on the stall speed and turn rate, among other things. In this specification, the G55 had an advantage. The G55 turned better than the BF109 because of its lower wing loading. Regardless, the German plane had a faster roll rate, rendering this section inconclusive. The BF109 was faster than the Italian fighter. The Fiat fighter had an advantage in range. But due to the defensive nature of the war at this point, range wasn't the most important concern. The G55 had a significant advantage in sealing, which was critical for bomber interception. The German Commission determined that the climb performance of both fighters was comparable. The G55's armament was superior to that of the BF109's basic version. Despite this, the German plane could carry two additional 20mm cannons, but this would have a negative impact on all other aerodynamic considerations. Overall, this comparison demonstrates why the German Commission was so intrigued by the Italian fighter, but the underlying question is whether it was worthwhile to change production with all the associated complications. Giulio Torresi was an Italian pilot who joined the Regia Aeronautica in June 1935. He was stationed in Tobruk, Libya, when Italy entered the war in 1940. He claimed six British aircraft while flying the biplane Fiat CR-42 Falco, making him one of the war's few biplane aces. During 1942, he fought on the Soviet front in the more modern MC-200 SETA, achieving significant success once again. He claimed several B-24 Liberators while flying the RE-2005 Sagittario out of Naples in 1943. Following the armistice, he joined the ANR and flew the Fiat G-55, where he headed four new claims, two B-24 Liberators, one B-17 Flying Fortress and one P-47 Thunderbolt, all downed on the same day. April 25, 1944. He was killed in action on July 1, 1944, when he was shot down after being surprised by 11 P-47s, shortly after taking off from Reggio Emilia. 
He received four silver medals, two for his actions in North Africa, one for his actions in the Soviet Union, and the last for his actions in defending Italy. Torres's service was also recognized by the Germans, who bestowed the Iron Cross second class on the Italian aviator. His final tally was 10 confirmed victories, one probable and 10 shared. The Fiat G55 was a fascinating fighter. It had a lot of promise, particularly the G56 variant with the new German DB603 engine. However, its complicated production was a fatal flaw at that stage of the war, especially from a German standpoint. It arrived too late to make a significant impact, and despite giving a good account of itself under extremely difficult conditions, it ended up being little more than a footnote in the war. Following the war, G55 production was restarted and the fighter served in the air forces of Italy, Argentina, Egypt and Syria. The debate over which was the best Italian fighter of the war will certainly continue. Although opinions differ on the subject, it's incredibly hard to have this debate without mentioning the G55. Looking at today's world, Italian design and German engineering, a positive outcome had to be expected. Was Germany wrong by not producing the Italian fighter? Let me know what you think in the comments below and please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. Your support is greatly appreciated.